how does this begin to move towards eye treatment? Uh, the thing that, uh, so this is getting into Becker's work now. This is out of, uh, this is just an illustration in Becker's book called The Body Electric. And uh, Robert O. Becker was, uh, he was kind of a, an eccentric guy. Uh, he's very reclusive now and doesn't answer phone calls. But he was an orthopedic surgeon. He was very interested in uh, regenerative medicine. And he was interested in this experiment by Smiths. Uh, frogs, salamanders, things like that have an ability to regenerate limbs. And frogs are a little complex. They don't do it as well as salamanders. But Smiths showed here that if you applied an electric current to an amputated frog limb, that it, if you put the positive pole out here near the stump, nothing happened. If you put the negative pole out here, and this was a platinum electrode, that you began to get regeneration. And eventually, uh, if, and if you moved the electrode along, you could regenerate perfectly the entire limb in a, uh, in a frog. And so what Becker started doing is he wanted to go, well, how do we get mammals to regenerate? And so the initial experiments he did, this is a, a uh, leg bone of a rat and he started he would dissect out the sciatic nerve the nerve from behind the shoulder blade of the rat he would bring it into the bone and out and attach it to the skin this was important this connection this neuroepithelial junction here uh, was critical and this was his microcurrent stimulator he this was the electrical activity that allowed things to start regenerating here and that this uh, you can imagine this operation is uh, tedious, if nothing more. Um, and I'm not a big fan of animal uh, experimentation, but I, I show you this because it, it, makes, it demonstrates an important point. And this was the article that I pulled out of Science, Scientific American back in the 70s. Um, and what he showed is that if you uh, could apply electrical stimulation, initially he was doing it by dissecting out the nerve, the the uh, nerve from behind the scapula, the sciatic nerve, but eventually what he, he got tired of doing that, so he began developing equipment that would reproduce the kinds of currents that he was seeing from that nerve and applying those externally. And again, negative pole, platinum electrode, and he was able, if he followed this stump as it regrew, he was able to come up with what, it was never perfect, it was a rather deformed leg, but he was able to regenerate the limb of a mammal in a rat. And even before I was in medical school, it was pretty clear to me that if you could cut the leg off a mammal and get it to regrow, that that was kind of significant work. Um, that, that seemed to be pretty important to me. Um, and uh, so that was kind of my early uh, interest in that. And I, and I carried this article around and, and eventually it kind of followed me. Now humans have a limited ability and uh, this is just some work, this uh, surgeon, Cynthia Illingsworth, uh, had been called in to see a kid in an emergency room and she left instructions for the this amputated finger to be sewn back up in this kid and it didn't happen and the kid came back into her office a couple days later and she realized oh my god they didn't sew the tip up and she noticed that the finger was regenerating so up until about the age of 10 or 11 years if you cut a finger off beyond this first crease so just the distal part of the finger that finger will regrow and I have seen this happen um, I have, I had read this work. I worked a lot of hours in emergency. I worked years in emergency rooms, and uh, and I would horrify the nurses by saying, "We're you know just kind of put a loose dressing on it; it'll regrow," and they go, "Well, you can't do that." And I go, "Oh yeah," and then and it would. So um, many people have documented this. There's you know a whole literature on this, and but as you age, you lose the ability. And in fact, in uh, the work he was doing with rats, if the rat was much beyond a year or a year and a half old, he could not duplicate that uh, regeneration of a limb. It had to be a fairly young rat. So, so that was Becker's work. And uh, I just show here, this is the unit we use uh, for the eye. And I, I put the slide up here mainly, I just want to talk a little bit about technology because one of the technologies we use is microcurrent stimulation. And uh, I'll tell you the story that happened with Becker's work. So Becker, he took this work and where, it, where he first applied it then was in orthopedics at getting um, bones to heal that weren't healing. And uh, where you see this technology the most now is in sports medicine. So if you're watching a football game and they're hauling somebody off on a stretcher, if you're paying attention, that person's hooked up to a microcurrent stimulator before they're ever off the field. And the reason they're back playing in a week rather than three weeks later is that the microcurrent stimulation leads to a very uh, accelerated regeneration and repair in these sports injuries. And so you can't walk into uh, any racetrack you go to, any uh, uh, 
Olympic training team, a lot of high school teams, if they have the money for it, they're all using this kind of technology in sports. Now, but what Becker found, Becker actually started a company, and he was selling microcurrent stimulators for orthopedic work, but he wasn't well-funded. And there were a lot of companies that said, wow, this is amazing. This is incredible technology. This is uh, something, we could build a machine that looks like that, and we could make a bunch of money. And so some very well-heeled, well-funded corporations that could put up huge displays at orthopedic conferences started putting their own machines on the market and they weren't very good and a lot of orthopedic surgeons went to a conference and they heard about this technology and they bought a machine and they took it home and it didn't work and their conclusion was the technology doesn't work what they didn't realize is no you just bought a bum machine you, you bought a bad machine and so the same is true with the eye work I have a whole box full of microcurrent stimulators from other people that people have heard, oh, microcurrent stimulation treats my eyes. Their acupuncturist says, I can get you one of those for 100 bucks. They use it. If their eyes don't get worse, they don't get better. And then they go, it doesn't work. And uh, there's sort of two parts to that story. One is, you know, if you read about uh, a medical procedure, if you read about a supplement in a paper, you want to look at what brand were they using, how much of it were they using? Because if you want to get the same results, you want to use the same brand, you want to use the same machine. And so, um, you know, this, this current is now, it's uh, microcurrent stimulation, uh, microcurrent technologies incorporated, it's a, out of uh, Florida, but, uh, and it's not to say it's the best machine on the market, but right now, of the ones that I've seen, and I've seen them all, this is the one that we use. Uh,